It is time for the Hold the Rope Show, presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and Sammy's Grill on Highland, starring Skip Bertman and Dan Canaveri. The latest on the business of sports, LSU sports, LSU baseball, and national sports topics. Here now is the host of the Hold the Rope Show, Tommy Chrysan. Hello and welcome to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. I am Tommy Chrysan here on a Tuesday night. As always, brought to you by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and of course the good people at Sammy's Grill on Highland. Got a dynamite show for you tonight. Well, Coach, we got uh, TK, we got a good show. We got uh, Brett McCabe from the Mind side, former LSU player. And we've got Mike Sorotka, in Skip's opinion, the best left-handed pitcher that ever played for him at LSU. And so we're going to talk a little pitching, talk a little mental, and uh, have a good time with it all. We do want to thank Greg Patterson and Scott oh. uh, uh, Scott Barber for being here last week. Got a lot of nice feedback. Right. Scott Barber was sensational. Greg was good. Coach, I know you enjoyed having Greg. I enjoyed having Greg. He's one of the all-time very successful businessmen uh, and has always been successful. But uh, he was one of the first guys recruited. Uh, he was only a senior, see, when I got here. So I was able to watch him play and recruit him. And, uh, and of course, he was a great one for me. So, yes, he was good. But Scott Barber added a new dimension and a different one that was good for us. I really enjoyed Scott. And don't forget, this segment brought to you by Chino's Restaurant in Hammond. Great place, downtown Hammond. Lunch or dinner, you see the sign on the the tag on the bottom, China Restaurant. Lots of things to get to tonight, but I guess we'll start with LSU football. They're the SEC West Division champs. Uh, they got the win against UAB. They did what they were supposed to do. Got Texas A&M in front of them, then a trip to Atlanta. Yeah. Yep, a little pedestrian effort. I was at the game. To, uh, I was there, of course, you know, working the game. Probably, on my guess, the actual was about 60, 65,000 people. Well, the weather well, deterred cool. everybody. There were yeah. walk-ons had more people than the club, I think. <laughs> you know, they didn't want to take on that weather. Oh, that was terrible the weather, you know, I mean, at that particular game time. Right. That was terrible. But let me let me say this again. I mentioned this a lot. I really don't know Coach Kelly uh, on a personal basis, but I, I love the way he talks to the media and in essence in talking to the people. Uh, like, for instance, he mentioned again this time you know, how powerful it is for his team, our team, LSU, uh, to win this ball game, whatever it is, of course UAB, because that's where we're at at this time. He explained it. There is no trap game. He's not looking at the Georgia I can't believe it, but players, uh, you know, media, uh, you any plans for Georgia you're working on? <laughs> He's not doing that because that's not what you do. If they don't beat A&M, it won't be because they're looking ahead to Georgia. But, of course, that's what the media will say. Uh, I think he's terrific. I think he's a Hall of Fame uh, coach regardless of uh, – but I think he's done a wonderful job really rooting for him against A&M and, of course, for Georgia. Big performance by Jaden Daniels. We, we now have learned that he was the Arkansas game, and it certainly would affect your performance, one would think. Several players were, not just Jaden Daniels. I guess Daniels. that's why we had all the chicken soup on yeah, the sidelines. Yeah, the side chicken lines. broth, and then, then yeah. it went with the clam chowder <laughs> the other night, I yeah, saw. But that's, uh, that's No, cool. but he performed very well against UAB, as did Noah Kane. You know, the running back room was a little thin. Kane scores three touchdowns and yeah. does what the coaches well, asked him to do. Well, they rested Williams to have him ready for the uh, you know for the big game against Texas A and M. They got him healthy, kept him out of the well, game. It showed you, it shows you something that Nolan Kane picked up seventy six yards and you know, like you say, and of course three touchdowns. Nolan Kane's coaching at A and M. <laughs> Nolan Kane, yeah. yeah, right, Nolan. <laughs> Nolan Kane, that's right. He's a coach, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, our kid <laughs> did a great job. Okay, I think that's the essence of the team. Who's ever in there has to do well. It, it, it's, I mean, you know, you have, you have to produce for your partners, for your teammates. Skip would call it uh, in our day, like especially in 96 when Morris got hurt early. We yeah. played two other guys. Trey McClure got hurt right away, and then Casey Kuntz, team of the moment. You know, you can't worry about who's hurt, who's not hurt. But I tell you, the thing in that UAB game – Daniels with a comeback performance, meaning 
He had a poor performance and he came back with an outstanding Did a wonderful run. Job. That's a great sign, I think. Great sign, wonderful job. Uh, they didn't just have a uh, against a weaker team uh, an effort that just was enough to beat them. They did a wonderful job, both on offense and defense. They didn't play everybody. Uh, they held people out. They dropped them out after the first half. I think they did a wonderful job. Well, you know, Coach Kelly said Monday, you know, A&M's probably a little better than their record would indicate. Sure. But your record is what you are. But this is this is it for A&M. It's yeah. their bowl game. They're not going to a bowl game. The only one in the wins. SEC that isn't bowl eligible. Right, I saw you point on that. But, I'm, so, I mean, they're, they're going to be ready to go because they, they're packing the helmets up on Sunday or Monday. So they're going to give it their best shot. Now, you know, we'll see what happens Saturday night. I'll tell you what, though, over the weekend, when we got to the game on Saturday, boy, was a football, college football world turned upside down. I mean, uh, yeah. people, the, the, whoever made the spreads uh, got killed. I mean, yeah. nobody, nobody made it. But I'll tell you what, what a break for the LSU fans in a way, uh, Tennessee going down. I mean, that put us ahead of Tennessee in some races well, for the uh, SEC and kind of even things out a little bit. Uh, Skip, what do you think about uh, beat A&M, go to the, bowl, uh, go to the uh, championship? What do you think that uh, lends for us bowl projection-wise? Uh, I think that uh, – I don't remember. We're not, we're not talking past A&M. We're just making projections. And the A&M still number one. Got to beat A&M. All right. I think that uh, – uh, George is a big favorite, I'm sure, when the time Six, comes. 16 points. Yeah. And uh, and deservedly so. I mean, they're fifth out of six year. They've been in the championship. Only, only the third team to go with back-to-back -back back undefeated to back. SEC yeah. play. Florida did it in the 90s, and uh, Georgia did it a few years ago. You hear that? So Alabama hasn't even. Bama did, no, Bama, Bama did it, and Florida did it in the 90s. Bama in the did 90s, it but nobody, 50, nobody's done it. hadn't done lately. And they haven't lost a football game well, in two years. I was going to say, nobody's done 20 years of football. Nobody's done that. Kirby Smart kind of underrated in a way. Everybody's about Saban, but Kirby Smart's done a well, heck of a job. Well, I think he's terrific, of course, and I think George is wonderful and so on. And I think that anything can happen in one football game. You know, anything can happen. But I don't want to look past A&M. Let's do this instead. Let's say they're ranked fifth in the country. Yeah, we're sixth today. Yeah, both like both. we're sixth. Let's say we're five or six. Now, you can't be in the top four because TCU had that unbelievable win and everybody is 11-0 in that category. So you don't have to feel like, oh, darn it, if we would have beat Florida State, we could. No, you couldn't because I think there are four undefeated teams going in. But to beat fifth or sixth in the country, who wouldn't have rooted for that? <laughs> My God, you got to give this coach and, of course – all the coaches, but mostly the players. Whoa, I'm very proud of them and what they've done to be where they are. Yeah, so it's a lot of things. You know, a couple of things. I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving this week. A uh, great time for family and friends, so we don't want to get away from that. Uh, deal. Coming up tonight, Dr. Brett McCabe. He'll be joining us in just a little bit. Again, this segment brought to you by Chena's Restaurant in Hammond. Great place for lunch or dinner. So we're going to take a break, come back with Dr. Brett McCabe, one of your uh, former pitchers and a guy who's really into the mental part of sports, yes, not just football is. or baseball, golf. He's real big in the golf world. That'll be up next. we we'll remind you that you are watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Stay tuned. Hey, everyone. This is Buddy, our new team member. Why are you smiling like that? Jerry Lane Chevrolet, what's your favorite color car? We have SUVs, we have trucks, we have cars. Oh, and we have fast cars. Okay, we need this car done by the end of the day. All done. What the? All righty, and if you sign right here, we can have your car ready for you. Spreading joy and Christmas cheer for all of Baton Rouge to hear.
As owner and operator of China Hammond, Chance Kitchen has spent 20 plus years in the restaurant business and has taken inspiration from a multitude of sources and put them into what he considers to be the ideal establishment. As a Hammond native, Chance still has a strong attachment to the community in which he was raised. Chena's goal is to use local ingredients and delicious recipes to create an exceptional dining experience while also providing a fresh and inclusive atmosphere that can be enjoyed by everyone. Salute! For a reservation, call 985-622-3222 or go to the website at www.cnahammond.com. Fat Tuesday's Casino, located in the Plaquemin Truck Stop on Highway 1 in Plaquemin, Louisiana. Come out to Fat Tuesday's Casino, where every day is a carnival. If you're ready to win some money, please visit Fat Tuesday's Casino in the Plaquemin Truck Stop, Plaquemin, Louisiana. Since opening our first Benny's Car Wash location in 1951, we continue to employ the latest in automated car wash technology, from the use of electronic sensor technology to the chemistry and engineering of cleaning agents. Over the years, our car care services have expanded to include detailing, oil changes, state inspections, along with Be Quick convenience stores and fueling stations. After seven decades of successful operations, we are proud to have nine locations serving the Baton Rouge area. For more information, go to Benny'sCarWash.com. with Skip and Cano here on a Tuesday. This segment brought to you by Rooster's Grooming Center. Great place to go. Well, folks, it's time for the uh, Blumberg and Associates. It's time to do the business of sports with, uh, with Skip Bertman. Uh, he's putting on the AD tie. Blumberg and Associates uh, specializes in mid to large size commercial accounts of all types. Our agency is currently comprised of three offices located in Baton Rouge, Denham Springs, and Ponchatoula. Although our accounts are largely concentrated in the East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and Tangipo Parish area, we also handle business throughout the rest of Louisiana, as well as Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Florida. That's Blumberg and Associates. And Skip, tell them who we got coming in. Uh, this week, what a guest. Thank you very much, Dr. Brett McCabe, who has his PhD, of course, in sports psychology in which he's a professional, and he speaks to, well, let's start at the beginning. He lives in Birmingham. He speaks to Alabama football, and, of course, he spoke to LSU baseball. Uh, he speaks just about to everybody that um, needs help. He's got a lot of clients individually, golfers, uh, tennis players, and, of course, other athletes. As an athlete, he came to LSU from Catholic High School. He sat out, didn't pitch much for first year or second year. But boy, in his third, fourth, and fifth year, he was a superstar for us. And I want everybody to say hello to Dr. Brett McCabe. We're still getting him in. He is. Uh, okay. We had a little. We had a little confusion with Mike, who's also coming on the show, Soraka. Oh, okay. And so I'm sending him a new link now. If he's not able to join, we can do it on the on the telephone. But we should have him to. We should have him on Zoom. Okay. Well, we'll talk a little bit about yeah. that. Well, we can talk about the fact that now in collegiate athletics, especially here at LSU, 
we've added to the training room health and nutrition and our mental health and right. uh, competition, uh, dealing with the competition. And this is where Brett, who does uh, work for Alabama, Nick Saban, a lot of schools. Coach, well, you kind of turned him on to that as a coach. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, my daughter, uh, Lisa, uh, got him going. She was a psychologist and got him going in the right direction. And uh, he's a superstar guy. Uh, let's just check a minute here. Here's a guy who's going to talk to you about what to think about uh, before you go up to hit. What you think about before the pitch. What you think about before the football play or before the game. And that's the guy we're talking about. We have him now, Lloyd? Yes, sir. Hello, Brett. Guys, how hey. you all doing? How are you? We see you. You look great. Uh, thank you. about that, but thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for being here. Gave you the uh, Catholic High, etc. introduction. Uh, we're very proud to have you. On the bottom, it says sports psychologist, former LSU pitcher. Tell me... How did you enjoy working at LSU with our baseball team? You know, that was awesome um, to come back and, and to stand and stand in front of those young men and share the values and the traditions that we had there for so long that you two created and were a part of and, and to be a contributor in that and to think about the guys that came before, but to share the values of what it means to be a part of that brotherhood. Um, that's a very rare bond and it's hard for people to understand what people do and what they've done to be in that situation. I mean, I just following, you know, Mike Soraka, a dear friend of mine um, on the show and, and to see, and it's, you know, it, it's humbling coach. It, it's humbling to be a part of this fraternity and the, what that legacy means. I mean, I think, you know, guys that didn't, that didn't play with on the same teams as me just has a shared bond and a shared unity. And so that's what I wanted to share to the young men that are playing for coach Johnson of what that means to, to be a part of the brand of LSU baseball and what that means to represent it, and and really what it takes when the when the moment is at its highest, is that's what you're prepared for. Right. That's when our team plays the best, when it counts the most. That's uh, right. LSU plays the best. They have the best record in the history, uh, percentage wise, win loss in the uh, SEC. Well, in the NC2A competition. So I'm very proud of them. not me, but the boys have done that. Very proud of them, and they've had some good people like yourself. Uh, Dan, you remember uh, Brett all the way as a pitcher, sure. and then, of course, sports psychologist. What do you think? I think it's great. And, Brett, I've got a question for you. Um, tell us a little bit about the growth in pro, professional, and college athletics of the sports psychologist and the mental side and mental health because – I know athletic departments are growing in those areas. Tell us how that's really uh, improved in the last five to ten years. Well, I mean, we're at the you know we're in the midst of a tidal wave on the mental health side, and some of it is a little bit of a pandemic as a result of what we had with COVID nineteen and and the impact on our youth generation and all of us, honestly. But for the last five, 10, 15 years, you've seen a turn in university settings and professional ranks of wanting to ingrain and you know integrate the psychologist into the way that coaches coach, um, helping them reach players, helping players manage the stressors uh, of college athletics. And this is even before NIL, but you know, there's a lot of pressure for young men and women to compete. And so having psychologists and mental health professionals within the athletic departments has been a really good trend. Um, and it's only growing. I remember calling coach when I was on internship up in Rhode Island at Brown and saying, coach, you need to put somebody on staff. And, uh, and now looking back, and there's departments. I know at Alabama, we have a department of probably 15 to 20 uh, providers. And I'm the only psychologist, but we have probably 15 counselors, a psychiatrist. We have a trainer who has a doctorate in behavioral health. And her whole purpose is being the triage and the connection and the bridge between coaches and me. So when a player comes in and we're working, um, I can help them from the moment that they show up to dealing with how to coach them how to connect to them, helping them manage the stressors over their four, three, four, five years on campus, some six now, and helping them in that perspective. And so when you look at the amount of pressures that our young men and women have to compete, it only makes sense. Um, you know, when we, when I played, we had what one or two full-time strength coaches and then a couple that provided other things. 
Now you go into the college ranks and there's full-time strength coaches for one team. That's where the mental side is going because it's that important. And the professional ranks in baseball have, have really transitioned. I just got a call recently to, to head up a, and we'll see if it works out, a major league team, um, and I can do it remotely. So we'll see. It's, it's a really cool opportunity. Um, I've been out with the PGA Tours for 10 years helping those players. So, you know, it's, it's a really cool place. But I think we were one of the early adopters at LSU Baseball of the mental side, and I think that was our advantage. I mean, I don't think we were the most talented. I just right. think we were the best at what we did. Good point. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, amongst motivation, uh, we had the best mindset, uh, I think, of baseball players at my time, you know, when, when I was coaching. And I think Jay does that well today. I think the competition's caught up a lot. And uh, Jay's opponents are better than the opponents that I played against when I led the team. But, uh, but I had, so I had to do a lot of things. And one of the things I did was Brett McCabe, Tommy. Yeah, no, uh, (laughs) the mental part is all about maximizing performance. And, and doc, if you can get that mental edge into a player or a team, you know, PGA golf's an individual sport, but then you get into the football and the baseball and everything else. If if you, if there's a team out there not, you know, adapting to this, they're going to fall behind. You look at it, and you know when you're going out there to compete, we're talking razor fine differences between the best athletes and the best teams in the country. And so, if we're looking on the PGA Tour, or we're looking at Division One college baseball and the SEC, we're looking at Saturdays in the fall, right? And and you look at what's those differentials, and it's the inference of trying to find a half a second advantage a couple times during the course of a game. Like I know Coach Saban says it, you said it, is that there's two or three points in a game where there's going to be an inflection point. There's going to be some kids that sit out there and say, what the hell just happened? And there's other kids that said I was prepared for what was going to happen. And that's what we try to do is we try to get them ready. But the cool thing is that what you see with players of today is they come into school ready. Like there's no more waiting as a freshman, waiting like these kids. And that's some of the pressure. These kids feel the need to play immediately, to compete for a Heisman, to compete for All-American, to be the best as a freshman but they're capable. But oftentimes the separator is that mental side, dealing with pressure, reducing the noise, dealing with critics, learning how to be coached. This generation does not, and and I get in a lot of trouble when I say this, but this generation struggles with the idea of being coached. It's not that they can't, they're not coachable. What it means is they rarely are truly given coaching feedback versus we'll fix it for you. We'll make it work for you. Mm -hmm. Coaching feedback of that wasn't good enough, figure it out and come back and not feel like you've been slighted or knocked down or told you're not good enough. Like there were times that like, I I always laugh. I only started one game in my career because I like to relieve. I didn't like to start. I was scared to death of it. But remember (laughs) I got the win against South Alabama and the next day in the paper, you said, yeah, McCabe was as good as everyone else would have been. But it was true. The fact was you prepared me for that. And anybody you put in that position would have been good. Today's generation would have looked at that and said, why is he hating on me? I looked at that and said, he's right. I did my job. Like, that's that was my job, to get the win. I did it. And then I was like, Coach, I don't ever want to start another game again. <laughs> hey, Brett, I've, no got, Brett I've, got a quick, I've got a question for you. You know, you talk about this is new, what you're talking about. Not new, but it's, it's becoming a bigger and bigger thing. How much do you have to work and have you worked with the coaches to get them, to, uh, coaches, assistant coaches, head coaches, to get them to understand what you're trying to do and how they can help you incorporate it with the student athlete. Oh, it's big, and 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 like I said, I know to our fan base there and and where I'm from, it's hard for me to say this, but in Tuscaloosa where I work, um, whenever I do talks, the coaches are in the front row, and there's a reason for that is that it has to be it has to be an all-in mentality. Um, Coach Saban's on the front row taking notes. Coach Oates, Coach Murphy, all those individual coaches are down there. It can't be, hey, the mental guy's here. You guys go do that, and I'm going to go back up to my office and take a time to take a nap or do my other work. It's that important. And so one of the things that I try to do is train every coach that we have is that if you want to reach these kids, you better learn how to develop a relationship with them. And the pressures that they have are different than when you and me played, Cano. It's different. And so we have to understand that it's not knowing what TikTok is and YouTube. It's knowing what those pressures are and knowing that their parents are invested in them at a higher level, that they want to see an immediate return. And 
I think getting coaches to understand that, to say, to share with them is like, this is the plan that I see for you. This is where I think you need to go. And this is how we're going to get there. Because you can tell a young man or, or a woman to, at the beginning of the season, well, I'm going to try to get you playing time. By the fourth game, they're sitting there going, why am I not getting playing time? They don't understand that I've got to work you into the rotation, get you experience. And that's something that coach used to tell us. Look, there's going to be times when you're, if possible, then if needed, then opportunity. Like, you're going to have to earn the right to graduate to play. And a lot of coaches fall into the trap of better talent, better coaching. They're going to play better versus saying, hey, Johnny or Mary, this is what I'm going to do. This is my plan for you for one year, two year, five years. And so I try to sit down with them and let them know what those stressors are and and to help them how to tap in and, and speak their language. Right. A uh, real good example is uh, Dylan Cruz, who came, uh, comes to LSU, and he's a great recruit and supposed to be wonderful, and he is. And then the second year, he's got to do better, and he does. But now he's going to be drafted. Is he going to be number one or number two? The pressures, all the things that they sense are a little bit different. His father and his family, Jay and all the coaches, I think do a real good job with this particular kid. You've had those kind of kids, have you not? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I remember sitting in a room having a conversation with a young man who was going for the Heisman and saying, you know, having to look and say, what do you control? Do you control the voters? Do you control playing well? Do you control the number of opportunities? Do you control a left tackle that misses a block? Or do you control how you respond to things? And we start we had to reframe that into where can we put our investment and so the noise around us is oftentimes pretty significant and you have somebody like dylan cruz maybe one of the best hitters to ever come through lsu well every game plan is going to be geared to him but now looking at that lineup i mean they got murderers row but everybody's got to respond <laughs> right and so you've got to look at it and say well if i'm going to gear towards cruz he's not going to get a good pitch to hit well, if Dylan, for instance, just using, is trying to play for the draft, now he's swinging. I remember, you know, look, Todd Walker, my roommate for three years, his junior year, every young, every pitcher pitched against him. Russ Johnson had hit behind him and had a phenomenal season, but uh, Todd had to take the onus of being pitched around and learning how to be patient and realizing that ability is not always defined by an outcome. Ability is defined by improving your process with increased levels of pressure. Boy, that, that's good stuff. I'm sorry, uh, Dan. I just want to, I'm going to give it to you in a minute because I think about it. I want you to ask the question. I just want to say this guy gave us this kind of information years and years ago. Now he gives it to uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, athletes. Very proud of this guy. Go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. Brett, you were Thanks, talking coach. about the pressures of the, the student athlete. We've talked about a lot in this show. What has NIL done <laughs> to improve your business? Uh, meaning there's a lot more pressure, a lot more to deal with now. Yeah. How big is, is that uh, upgraded uh, what's needed for these student athletes? I think there's two things that actually, I'm going to take the, the contrarian approach. I think NIL and Transfer Portal are wonderful, okay? Um, Transfer Portal because it gives, a, it gives a young man or female the opportunity to leave if they're not happy. And it also gives coaches the opportunity to look at a player and realize that there may be a better place for them and, and they may want to choose to stay, but th that discussion, they have that right. And a lot of times student athletes, the only right they have is the ability to transfer. Um, I think NIL is also great and simply from a fact of it gives value to area, but value also comes with honesty. And for when you don't have it, you feel like you're worth a lot more than when you do have it. And so what happens is you realize is that, you know, all these people who said they'd be there if it could are now having to answer the call and sometimes they're not. And so what, what, what the way that I've always had that conversation is like, look, you can make good money in college. And so don't be in a hurry to go to the professional ranks, whether it's football, golf, um, baseball, basketball, like you can make good money in school. And that's awesome because you do a lot for the university and there's a lot of interchange there. But at the same time, don't be in a hurry to run to go pro. And, and the reason I say that is NIL gives them the chance to stay and take advantage of the resources that they have. 
massage therapist, cold tubs, a full-time trainer, full-time athletic trainer, physical therapist, the best physicians around, right? I mean, we've got at Tuscaloosa, we've got the Andrews guys, uh, men and women that come over. Well, Dr. Andrews is an LSU grad, right? And so those physicians are over there at any given moment they have an MRI. And it's that way at the big schools too. So NIL allows them to make a living, to, to earn some income, but also learn the value of, of the professionalism of their job, which is, am I worth what I think I am? And if I'm not, what do I need to do to improve? But then always, it's amazing. NIL tends to also do really, really well with kids that have really good social skills and understand the business side of sport. You know, when I was in school, we had Shaquille and we had Todd and, you know, you had those guys. They were going to make their NILs. But what you're seeing, too, now in sports is like Olivia Dunn. You're seeing people find many different ways in a capitalistic society, wonderfully, find a way to make a living so that they're not having to pinch pennies to go to school. And they can, you know, put in 30 to 40 hours a week towards their craft in school and then also earn a living to take the pressure off. Um, and so, you know, college is expensive and living the life of college is expensive. So NIL is great. And it, it allows us to have that conversation and put it on the table. Brad, we're going to ask you to hold on. You need to come up with some stories about Coach Bertman while we, we <laughs> ask you to hold on. Uh, once again, this segment, <clears throat> the Blumberg and Associates Business of Sports. And Brett was talking about the business part through the NIL. This uh, segment also brought to you by Roosters Grooming Center. College football playoff rankings are out. LSU is number five. Ooh. in the rankings today. The CFP, yeah. I want to thank Stephen for texting me. That just came out a few minutes ago. We're going to take a break, come back with more of Dr. Brett McCabe, more of Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Stay tuned. You know, uh... Excuse me. Where were you going with all those keys? I was stealing them so that no one would get them as Christmas gifts. I've got a better idea. Why don't you come join us for our Christmas party? But I was just stealing your keys. I know, but I'm inviting you anyway. Why? Because it's Christmas. Maybe Christmas doesn't come from afar. Maybe perhaps Christmas is a Jerry Lane car. Sometimes simple is better. Like Sammy's signature white beans and catfish. Comfort food at its best and simply delicious. Sammy's better than ever. Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barbershop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Roosters, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. Mom, what's for Don't have time for a cold? A cut? Those allergies? Or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Blake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. Bayou Apparel has been helping local businesses communicate their message since 2009. As one of only a few local LSU official licensees, Bayou Apparel offers the highest quality products to showcase your brand. Whether you have an established brand or not, Bayou Apparel design experts can help you create an eye-catching design that fits your company's message. We do logos, event t-shirts, and promotional items for your business. Call 225-928-9090 or go to our website at www.bayouapparel.com. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic has been covering LSU baseball for decades. Their physicians have provided care for players of all ages and skill levels. At Brock, they can treat any kind of injury to the shoulder, knee, wrist, or elbow. Brock is also convenient with six locations in the capital area. Their after-hours clinic is open seven days a week for any type of orthopedic injury that happens at night or on the weekends. Skip and I have been with Brock for all of our orthopedic needs, and you should too. Go to www.brortho.com. For all of your insurance solutions, contact the Allegiance Group in Baton Rouge. Health, life, 
home, auto, property and casualty, and Medicare. They can enroll you in Medicare or review your Medicare plan. The office is located on Jefferson Highway across from the Bocage entrance. Locally owned and operated, great customer service. Connect on Facebook and Instagram, the Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions, or call 225-620-6990, the Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions. Continue with Hold the Rope here on a Tuesday night with Skip and Cano. This segment brought to you by Dependable Storage. And now it's time for Dugout Talk with Hudco Roofing. Yeah, uh, Hudco Roofing brings you Dugout Talk. Hudco has become one of the area's premier professional roofing contractors, specializing in residential roofing services. Our team of highly trained and certified roofers have a combined four decades of industry experience. Whether you need a simple repair or a complete roof replacement, our licensed insured contractors have the skills to take care of it. Call HUDCO today at 225-414-6153 to learn more about our residential roofing services, quality workmanship, premium products, and unparalleled customer service. That's HUDCO Roofing. All right, we continue with Dr. Brett McCabe here at on Hold the Rope. Appreciate the comments. Kenneth and Carl, keep them coming. And again, brought to you by Dependable Storage. Dan? Well, um, Brett, uh, we want to ask you, you got a few stories about Coach Bertman. I'm sure you had a lot on the road. Well, you know, five years of it, right? Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think one of the things – so everybody knows the coach's stories, right? And if you read the book, you know all the stories of Oksana Bayul and – um, what's her name from freaking Ames, Iowa? A little girl from Ames, yeah, Iowa. The girl, the girl from Ames, Iowa, yeah. I mean, my God. And you know, the funny thing is, a guy in my office, Brett Basham, played for Bianco, and I swear she went and got a graduate degree at Ole Miss. Same girl. Um, <laughs> but, but, That's but, you know, good, Brett. That's good, That's, Brett. That's, That's good, Brett. One nothing, Brett. That's a good one. <laughs> so, but, so, you know, I get a call one day from Coach, and I go in the office, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be good. You know, I don't know what's, you know, what's going to be. And he's like, look, look, you're one of the few guys that knows where the library is on campus. I'm like, well, yeah, I do. And, and he goes, I need you to go. You know those stories I tell? And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, those stories. And so, you know, he goes, I need you to go find more of those. I'm like, where the hell do you find those? Like, you know, like, so I go to the library and I go through the, the files of, of Middleton Library, right? Five stories. Of, I'm going around <laughs> looking for stories. And I come back and I'm like, and, and, and it's, you know, we used to laugh about those stories all the time, but we never forgot them. We were, you know, we were down in uh, Miami for the live golf event. I have a player that plays on the live tour and I'm walking the fairway with him. He goes, Hey, I got a dinner tonight. I can't get together. Like, That's fine. I said, I think one of my old teammates has a restaurant here, Louis Garcia. And so I text Louis and I'm like, Hey, where's your restaurant? And I gotta be honest, I didn't know how good it was going to be. And so my wife and I go over that night and Louie just opens up the spread of stone crabs. And I mean, mm -hmm. we ate appetizers and we were full before he ever showed up. And it was three sure. and a half hours later. So we're sitting outside talking. Of course, Louie's the, the story guy. And <laughs> we're talking and he's telling his story about how you impacted him. And, and then right behind us, there's a couple sitting there and the guy stops and he says, hey, I hear you guys are talking about LSU. I played at USC out in California, and I've always heard the stories. And he said, it's funny, I would heard the stories firsthand because my son's baseball coach is Rich Cordani oh, up in oh, Boston. Oh. And we were like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> and for four hours, I think we sat out there. I think they, the stone crab boats were going out by the time we left. <laughs> But those stories of sitting around there and listening and talking, and, and we, we forget. I, I know I'm very blessed in my life to be a part of the program and have to been there and have you guys taken a chance on me. I hope I pay it forward every single day of my life to tell you guys thank you for that. But those stories were so true. Like anything you ardently desire, sincerely believe in, vividly imagine, enthusiastically act upon. You would say it and we would all roll our eyes and go, oh, my God, we've heard this. But we all live it every day. Right, we all live it. And you know, you get on the bus and coach would sit in the front in that front seat and we'd all try to get to the back and he'd light up that cigar. <laughs> and and the cigar smoke would wave back and 
and you know you would just he'd walk in the in the outfield and you'd be out there shagging balls as a pitcher and he'd stop to talk to you and you're like not now not now not oh man <laughs> but it was always good right it was always good and i now you know now i understand what you were doing you know um but you know you'd go out there and you'd check and you'd look and and you know he'd talk but i you know the things that people don't you know coach impacted so many men and and on this program because what he did is he got you to believe in what it took for you to become the best version of you and i know people say that a lot but it's different when you're having to fight for something you love and something and what i loved about coach i think this is important it didn't matter what your scholarship level was it didn't matter i was a preferred walk-on from catholic high academic kid took three years to play there and we got hurt fourth year but I was treated like everybody else. And what it took was those who could figure it out did it. And there were very talented kids that came in who left. And I think from the playing aspect of it is, you know, it's like, you know, you're sitting there and I remember my senior year, we're traveling, we're doing the North Louisiana run. And, you know, I, I, was, I went on one game and pitched and got a vault, you know, like a cheap victory. And Vulture. we go the next night and I get it. A, a vulture and i got another one the next night and it was two in a row back to back and i remember we're sitting there and our team was good that year my senior year 95 we were really good midway through the year until we all hit that vomit virus at Ole miss and but we're sitting there and, and i remember in the team and you know he just had this way of like building you up and he's like jesus christ brett mccabe is the leading pitcher got the most wins on the team but it was true right i mean you know we, we're sitting there and and you know, those are the things that you sat there and you looked at and, and, you know, I can remember being out on the mound and he'd walk out there and you're thinking, okay, there's going to be some wisdom. He wouldn't say anything. He would just make a comment and then turn around and walk away and be like, wow, okay, that's what he gets paid the big bucks for. And then other times he would, <laughs> you know, let you know, but it was never, I mean, you just wanted to fight for the guy. You just wanted to, but I grew up watching Dan Kite, Greg Patterson, Stan Lower, Barry Manuel. I grew up with those, Ben McDonald. I grew up watching that. And, and that was just cool. So I think, you know, when, when I look at the opportunity that we had during that period and fans saw that, there was an authenticity to our team that was amazing. You know, we did do our own mounds. We, we did have to do our own stuff. Um, we, we, you know, we'd go to camp and see our camp shirt, our shirts for sale at camp. But other stuff, <laughs> stuff like that was great. That was Sandy. We that wasn't Skip. Pizza. That was Sandy. <laughs> Hey Brett, I got a que I got a question for you while you're on there. Tell the yeah. folks this: Skip had the innate ability, and I had him as a player and a coach, of yep. just when you like ready to say that, oh, that's enough. This guy, this is bothering me. He'd pat you on the back, and just when you were feeling yep. good about yourself and getting a little overconfident, he'd beat you back down. Isn't that a great yeah. gift? Do you agree with that? Oh, I mean, shoot, he knew when to, to push the buttons. He knew when, but he knew when you can have your buttons pushed. And I think that's the big difference. I think a lot of coaches come out and they go, I'm going to build this player up and they just break them down, but they don't know how to build them up to get them to that spot. So it's kind of like being a jeweler. You raise the price and then you put it on sale. That's what coach did to us every day is he <laughs> built us up and then would knock us down. Then he'd build us up and he'd knock us down. But by the end, there's a great story about culture. Uh, that I have that my freshman year, this is before you got there, Cano, we're out there and we had to catch, you know, we had to get every home run ball from batting practice in. And my freshman year, we had some good hitters, you know, Cordani, lefty, and hit him in, the, in Nicholson Drive. And there was this funny way, you know, people would stop and pick up those balls or they'd hit them with a car and it'd go like three miles down the road. <laughs> and you have to come back and they'd be like, you have to run X number of poles per ball missing, right? And so, I remember Chad OJ was the junior when I was a freshman, somebody I always looked up to because the way he did things. And, you know, I, I come in one day after practice and I'm like, there's a ball stuck between the four fences that we had behind the left field wall for some reason we <laughs> never took down. I don't know, coach, you could have made a lot of money if you scrapped that metal. But um, there was all those fences back there and I couldn't get to the ball. I mean, there was nothing I could do. I couldn't get to it. And I come running back in and Chad goes and in front of all the pitchers, like, dude, that's not how we do it. Like, you got to go back out there and get it. Like, but I can't. He's like, try again. I go running back out there, can't get it. I come back in, and we do that again. And it's amazing that third time I found a way to do it, right? And Chad's point was there's a standard that we hold as players that we all hold each other to. Coach set the vision, but we hold you to those standards. 
And it was amazing that once you realized that there was something that was so important to you, that coach had you vi to see, to visualize. I mean, here I was as a kid who really believed that I was going to be in the biggest moments. And I was, I was in some huge moments and I, it was, it was, you know, people say, you know, did you have imposter syndrome or whatever? And I was like, no, I was <laughs> built to believe I was to be there. Like, why not me? Right. Why not? Yes. There were players that were 10 times better than me, but I believed I was the right guy for that job at that time. And it was just that standard. And I, I think those stories, you know, we get together as players and yes, it's a lot of um, rated R commentary and jokes, but at the end of the day, we wouldn't miss one of those opportunities to get together and rehash the memories. We're, we're so happy uh, that you could eloquently uh, put it the way you did, and I personally appreciate it, and I want to thank you very much uh, before we continue on because uh, you're really terrific. Thanks again, Brett. Thank you, Brett. We really Coach. appreciate your time tonight. Thanks, honey. And we got a lot of nice comments, so appreciate it. We'll do it again <laughs> down the road. Thank you. Love you guys. The next time I'm in Baton Rouge, I'll come by and say hey. Thank you. Thanks, Brett. All right, once thank again, you. that segment thank brought to you right. by Dugout Talk with the Hudco Roofing. Also, dependable storage as we're here on Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. When we come back, we're going to talk some baseball, some LSU baseball, maybe a few other things. Coming up in a little bit, big lefty, for, not big lefty, former lefty, Mike Soratka. He'll join us in a little bit. And again, we thank Dr. Brett McCabe. That was really outstanding stuff. We're back after this pause. You are watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Excuse me. Where were you going with all those keys? I was stealing them so that no one would get them as Christmas gifts. I've got a better idea. Why don't you come join us for our Christmas party? But I was just stealing your keys. I know, but I'm inviting you anyway. Why? Because it's Christmas. Maybe Christmas doesn't come from afar. Maybe perhaps Christmas is a Jerry Lane car. Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable Storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable Storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at dependablestorage.com. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. Advanced Windshield has served the Baton Rouge area for over 20 years. They take pride in the two technician system where we can ensure a proper seal every time. We will not compromise Good, the ability to cut costs by only having one technician in the truck. This also helps us provide quicker services than our competitors. We are dedicated to providing the highest quality work with the quickest service. Go to advancedwindshield.com or call them at 225-248-6788. That's advancedwindshield.com. Doyle Electric has been impacting our community for over four decades. Established in 1978, our work helps to build a better quality of life for ourselves, our family, and friends in our community. Our success is built on core values of excellence, teamwork, integrity, and meritocracy. Committed to excellence, we'd love to hear about your upcoming project and figure out how Doyle Electric can help. Call us at 225-752-5112 or go to our website at www.doraelectricinc.com. At Baker Gulf Coast Industrial, a full-service civil and deep foundations contractor, every day is a chance to play for the winning team. We're looking for first-string players to help us build the future of the region. Success on our field is defined by grit, tenacity, and the will to get the job done right the first time. You'll gain the advantage with steady work, excellent pay, and plenty of opportunities to advance. Apply today to join our team at BakerGCI.com. That's B-A-K-E-R-G-C-I.com.
We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. This segment brought to you by La Caretta Restaurant. Lots of locations, lots of good food and stuff at La Caretta. This uh, segment, we're going to baseball talk or talking baseball. Uh, got to put the Blumberg baseball hat on. And uh, our commercial accounts represent a broad spectrum of business, both small and large. Most of the personal business, homeowners, auto, etc., is sold to the owners and employees of our commercial accounts. At Blumberg, we also handle association programs and are closely affiliated with groups such as the Louisiana Pest Control Association, the Baton Rouge Board of Realtors, and the Automotive Industries Association. Blumberg & Associates provides insurance coverage for a variety of needs, both commercial and private. Whether you're in the market for business, homeowners, automobile, life, or health insurance, we can customize a plan that is as individual as you are. That's Blumberg & Associates. And... LSU baseball has concluded fall practice. Coach Johnson had a little meeting with the media to kind of wrap things up. Coach Bertman, uh, something you always viewed as very important, LSU baseball players, how important is it what they do between now and January when they right. report? He, he may, coach, may allow some kids to focus and not show up uh, through the rest of the semester. Remember, it's only with the Thanksgiving holiday, there's only a couple of weeks left. And then they have final exams and they're gone. So it's not so much that he can do it right now, but as soon as he gets back on the first day, they can begin practice. But until he goes, those that can are allowed to come out you know, four at a time and for one hour. And that's easy to get two pitchers, two catchers, and get them to work. Or Turtle Thomas, uh, I understand, came in and worked with some catchers. It was great last week. And they get a lot of coaching. I'm saying it, it, it's not just the games, not just the scrimmages, the purple and gold scrimmages that they had to <coughs> conclude. It's the practices and how well you practice. Did you get better every day? 1%, 2%, did you get better? And I think that's what you're asking. I think they can still do that between now and the time they leave for the Christmas holidays. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's very important that the players continue to work and continue to get better because if not, somebody else is going to be out working them. Well, well, see, the thing, too, is – so. Unlike when Skip, when Skip was coaching, it seems like more and more now, these kids, they get done with Christmas break, do a little New Year's, and then they're right back. Or some guys don't take New Year's down here because they have these nice apartments. They all live together. Yeah, sure. And they got all the facilities, and they have a thumb code, and they go work in the Marucci Center. They can lift weights. They can do things. So a lot of these guys are really anxious to get back and stay on the path to get ready for the season. And it's a lot different than when we were coaching, Coach, because of the access they have right. and the ability of the apartments right. and, and all the things they have at their uh, fingertips. So I think it's a big edge for Jay. And that's something, Coach, that you have to instill in the players that the level of competition to play at LSU, the internal competition, makes them want to come back and make sure they stay in shape and work out over the holidays. And as we always used to say, if you are going home, find somebody to play catch with, some fine place to work out. Yeah, some place to do a little bit of work. Yeah. Uh, I send a letter out, uh, you know, which I did every year, the same date, send a letter <laughs> out. And uh, I hope that the kids would remind them to do some work when I couldn't see them over the uh, Christmas holidays so that when it came back they were in better shape than if they didn't do it. I think they do it. Uh, whether you ask them to or not, I think the kids play all the way. They'll they'll work out. I think they're trained to do that. I think Jay has trained them, as Paul Maneri did. I think there well, there is no time when you can really take off. I think the weight training programs, the way they've improved in the facility that they have in the Marucci Center, and the access they have where we had to share with football and find a place yes. these guys can go in with a thumbprint they can be the only one in there and get their workouts in right i think that emphasis on weight training that you started at lsu in right. baseball really started right, college but, baseball yeah but if you're here you can go to the weight training baseball you know weight training site which of course wasn't there at our time uh they can do a lot of other things if they're here but if they go home 
there's got to be a place that they can go and strength build and uh, do what they do what they want to do to stay good and to be in shape as fast as they can. When they come back, there's a limited amount of practice before the first game. And, and I think players these days, especially if you're at LSU, you're at in the SEC and other programs around the country, players realize they have to work or mm. somebody's going to pass they wanna, them up. They don't want to take. They want to drop and lose a little bit from the hard work in the fall. They want to keep it going and continue. So. Yeah, you, you maybe take Christmas Day off and have a nice oh, big meal. and But then okay. you got to be ready when you get back. You can't get ready after you get back. Well, I'm right. for that, uh, Tommy. And uh, I was doing that. And Jay's doing pulmonary did that. Jay's doing that. I think the reason they do that is what Tommy said. All teams are so good. All players are so good everywhere. In the state of Louisiana, all the schools, and uh, and of course that's true in Alabama or Mississippi and other states as well. Uh, the athletes are better in baseball than they used to be. This has been Talking Baseball, brought to you by Blumberg and Associates, and of course this segment, as always, brought to you by La Caretta Restaurants. We'll take a break. We come back, an old lefty, Mike Soratka, he'll join us, and he'll have plenty of good stuff. That's what's up next, right here on Hold the Rope. With Skip and Cano. Stay tuned. Sammy's famous cheese sticks are the bomb. Sammy's better than ever. Have you been issued a ticket for texting, speeding, or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 225-343-1111 or connect with us online at ocbrown.com. Mom, what's for breakfast? Don't have time for a cold? A cut? Those allergies? Or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Lake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. La Carreta is the place for after work fun, but that's just the beginning of why we've been in South Louisiana for over two decades. Follow your nose to the best Mexican grill and experience fresh ingredients, fun indoor and outdoor dining, and fast and friendly service. Like our Facebook page for event news and live music announcements. Visit CaretaRestaurant.com to find daily specials for your local La Careta. Fresh, fun, and festive, it's where the fiesta begins. Everybody's got a guy, and I got a guy. That's right. They can handle monthly maintenance around your business or home with their professional team members. Ask us how to get set up and what plans we offer. I got a guy. One call for most trades. Not sure who to call? Reach out to us. Our skills are broad across many, many trades. Hourly rates are available. If you want one of our team members for a couple of hours, we can get that done. We can execute everything from house calls to running errands. I got a guy. Call 985 6 662 or send an email to info at I got a guy service.com. Are you a business owner? Could you use up to 26,000 back per employee? Employee retention credit program allows business owners to request a credit on payroll wages that they paid in 2020 and 2021. Go tax resolution, a division of Garrity and associates has been helping clients apply for funds for over a year with former IRS agents reviewing the documents and building an audit trail. You are sure to maximize the credit opportunities. Best yet is this company will evaluate your entire account at no charge. And when they have qualified you and done all the work, we'll give you a total on a fee basis. Call GoTax Resolution today and see if you qualify. Call 985-722-1040.
I'm Tommy Chrysan of Talking Sports with TK, and I invite you to check out my podcast, available on all major platforms. Wherever you get your podcast, search for Talking Sports with TK. We'll certainly talk a lot of LSU sports, sports across the state from Louisiana, national topics, Major League Baseball, you name it, Talking Sports with TK. We've been around for quite a while. Again, available wherever you get your podcast, search for it, Talking Sports with TK. I'm Tommy Chrysan. Hopefully, you'll enjoy my podcast very very soon. We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Greg, thanks for the comments on there. Appreciate it very much. Don't forget to like the video, share it, tell everybody about it to watch during the rest of the week. This segment brought to you by Citizens Bank. Coach, I know you want to introduce our guest. Uh, we have our uh, former pitcher, Mike Soratka, uh, Randy Davis, God rest his soul. Uh, coach picked him up out of the middle of Texas. Uh, Mike, you couldn't have weighed more than 145, uh, but he pitched very, very well as a freshman. I'll tell you what. And then he was great the rest of the year. So for four years, he was the best uh, left-handed pitcher I've ever seen at LSU. And naturally, he was drafted and worked his way up so quickly into the major leagues and played a long time in the big leagues. Mike, thanks a million for being with us. We really appreciate you. Thanks for having me, Coach. It's a pleasure. Um, good to see you guys. Uh, yeah, the, the origin story of how I ended up at LSU <laughs> is is one of the, the great Randy Davis stories of all time. How, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm pitching this game, strikeout 17. I give up one hit, a bloop double, and uh, Randy goes back and tells uh, Skip, hey, we got to have this guy. And Skip's like, hey, we, we – uh, how does he feel his position? How does he, uh, what's his pickoff move like? And he's like, Skip, nobody got on first base in the whole game. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, I show up. I re- uh, the game I that I remember the most, that I've always told Mike, the best game I've ever watched, a uh, pitch that I'll you on a competitive basis. I mean, there were games pitched where guys didn't reach first base as much. Or, but he played against uh, Fullerton, right? No. Long Beach, Long Beach. Long Beach. Long Beach State. Oh, sorry, Long Beach. Yep. The dirt bags. Uh, dirt, and they just were so lucky. The wind blew and they hit a one over right field. They bunted and Mike lost his footing. Uh, they got some runs and they got some players, but that was the most competitive game I've ever seen pitched. At LSU, yeah, it's, great job by Mike Sorotka, which allowed us, of course, uh, to come back and beat him in next time and then win the national championship. Mike was great. Well, so so what's funny about that is in that sequence, you know, my bullpen day was actually the day when uh, I was kind of brought in to close uh, <laughs> and met our dear friend Eddie Davis yes. um, with, with the long home run. Uh, so needless to say, my days as a closer uh, were over. Um, so I blew <laughs> that that previous game. Uh, but it had the, you know the great thing about baseball is it keeps on coming. Uh, so I had the opportunity to pitch uh, to Long Beach again, and uh, you know I'll, I'll never forget. You know that game was uh, without a doubt one of the the toughest battles uh, within the game that that you know I've ever been a part of. And so we're battling uh, back and forth. The, the strike zone's very small. You know, they've, they've seen me, you know, four or five times, maybe six times through the lineup now. And, uh, you know, we're, we get to the ninth inning, and there's an error uh, that costs us a run. And then the kid bunts, all right? And I'm like, <laughs> holy crap, what are you doing in slow motion as I'm running? and then fall right on my butt. And I'm like, oh my God, this is not the way my college career is gonna end. <laughs> uh, so, you know, sure enough, we get out of it. 
and and I like to tell this story because it, it's really uh, meaningful for me uh, because it all gets lost because of how everybody picked me up, you know, from because I, that's the only time I've ever walked off the field uh, feeling like I was uh, beat, beaten or, or defeated. It was my last college game. It was uh, everything I, I had to, to, to help us win. And the guy bunted on us to, to get that extra run. And I'm just like, there, you know, I just have never had that feeling ever uh, coming off the mountain. Sure, there's games you're going to lose. Sure, you, you know, you're, you're going to give up a blooper to lose uh, from time to time. You're going to get beat, and that's just, just the nature of the game. But, but in that scenario with so much on the line, the end of my college career, uh, uh, battling to the end of the ninth inning, 150 pitches, I'm just like, man, I could not have left anything more out there. And, That's and then true. the guys picked me up. I'm just like, what a crazy game baseball is. Uh, unbelievable that the, the, the game can turn because of Ant- Antonini's at bat and he, he takes a – a single to uh, to right field or up the middle. That's right. That's right. Uh, Very disciplined at bat, you know, just to to give us a chance to get to the big guys. Um, But, you know, just uh, really remarkable, uh, you know, how we started (laughs) and how we finished. Uh, It's pretty, 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 pretty amazing. Mike, uh, you, you pitched in 1991. Correct. At the uh, College World Series when we won our first national championship. Then, of course, the one we're talking about was 93 when Mike won. And there was a player that came up to pinch hit who was from Louisiana but went to California to play football and ended up on a baseball team. And he pinched hit, and he hit a breaking ball for a home run. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then the (laughs) next day he was batting fourth. Yeah, and hit a home run. <laughs> and then I think he hit a double. And he hit, uh, he hit the ball well another time. And then, of course, he ultimately yeah. struck out. And then at the press conference, my it's like, uh, Mike's back at the beach. He's back at the Eddie, beach. Eddie's back at the beach. Eddie, <laughs> Eddie's back at the beach. Mike said, <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, but he yeah he got me pretty good. I, I had never, uh, you know, honestly, really had never had uh, somebody take that kind of a bat against me uh, without having seen me, you know. So, so hey, anybody, I'm always going to uh, uh, force you to hit my curveball or my slider. Uh, prove it if you know if you if you can stay back and if you can hit a, a legitimate breaking ball. Prove it to me. And it was like wham, wham, wham. I'm like, okay, this kid's got it. <laughs> and and, well, he did. and time to make an adjustment. Um, uh, three at bats, three three uh, line drives, or or well well hit balls, and they're like, oh, here we go. Well, Mike, I got a question for you, Mike. Uh, we talked before the you know we talked on the phone. Mm-hmm. I want you and Skip to talk a little bit, and we've talked about analytics is so big in baseball now. Tell us about analytics uh, uh, on the pro side, analytics on the college side for a college pitcher or a pro pitcher. Well, yeah. So, so I'm involved in the youth yes. pitching, uh, you know, youth high school uh, college here in Texas in Houston. And so, uh, the 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 biggest uh, disconnect, uh, yes, the, the 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 science and the uh, you know the data is important on some level, but the biggest is that major league hitters hit significantly different than college hitters. And so that gets lost, all you know, as it tracks down through these levels. Hey, we're trying to do it against. Hey, high spin, high velo. Well, what happens when uh, uh, Arkansas flips to a seven lefty heavy lineup, and you don't have a secondary pitch or a sinker, or you can't hit your changeup, can't uh, hit your curveball? Um, and, and that's really, you know, a, a major league team can't really throw seven lefties at a right-handed power guy. So lots of high fastballs. The college hitters cannot strike out um, and not uh, have a consequence. Major league hitters can strike out uh, without consequence. Uh, a good example is, you know, if you use uh, Matt Carpenter was starting uh, for the Yankees after eight consecutive strikeouts. 
if somebody struck out eight times in a row for Skip, he may never play again, <laughs> right? And and so all that gets lost in in all the trying to translate this data down to the college game. These left-handed hitters are very very good. Uh, essentially, a bunch of Todd Walkers that will drive the ball over the shortstop's head uh, for a double. Uh, so if you don't have, a, uh, they take a lot of curveballs, so they don't really expand like a, a pro guy does. Um, and if you don't know how to pitch to that, it's extremely difficult, and it really affects pitching efficiency, right? Which is very critical uh, in a college type environment because your resources are limited. And in a pro environment, you essentially you have unlimited resources. Hey, I can just call another guy up if somebody doesn't perform. Well, you get to the back end or a second tier of a, of a college uh, pitching thing. Hey, hey, who, who's going to step up and do this for us if you don't know how to do it? <laughs> kind of approach. Well, you, you you were the greatest. How many years did you play in the big leagues? Um, I, let's see, 95 through 2003. Uh, mm-hmm. Although 2001, 2002, 2003 were my injured years. Right. He made the, so you can see, made the big leagues very quickly. Uh, had a great pitching motion. Uh, for me personally, as a coach, I knew that once he had two strikes, uh, he could throw his back door breaking ball, uh, either a slider, curveball, back door, and boom, the guy's out of there. Uh, he was a very, very competitive uh, pitcher with a real hammer uh, to get him out. Uh, let me refer to that big league thing. You're right. They go up in the big leagues, they swing and miss. Uh, I think the pitcher throws every pitch as hard as he can or every pitch as well as he can because he knows that he only has a limited number of pitches, maybe only two times through the lineup uh, instead of three or four. In college, uh, you're going to go through the lineup and maybe try and finish the game. Uh, like Mike, Mike pitched a lot of complete games because he was uh, he could get them out quickly. You know, he struck out a lot of guys and he got them out quickly or they dribbled the ball. He didn't get hit very hard. So he pitched a lot of games and completed them. In the big leagues, they don't. Uh, there were only about seven complete games in the big leagues for the winning guy this year, completed seven games. And uh, that's different. The hitting is different, as you mentioned. In college, you strike out. It's a terrible thing for our team, so to speak. In big league ball, you either strike out, walk, or hit a homer, right? And Mm -hmm. uh, so the stats don't really apply to us. Is that what you said, Mike? Exactly, yeah. So so the consequence for a college hitter is much more severe. So so as, as kind of Brett alluded to, um, you know, everybody is, is highly prepared to take, you know, these next steps into college baseball. Um, and then the hitters have figured out they've played so much baseball when they're, they're younger, their vision is, is elite. They, they can identify pitches they can recognize. Um, but what that means is, is they, they really see the ball. They don't make a ton of, uh, mistakes and they force you kind of into, uh, into the zone and, uh, and they're, 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 they're so skilled with their bat. They can pretty much do anything, but they are not going to go down striking out. Uh, they just, they can't, they, they have, they know they have to stay on the field and they have to play a team game, uh, where really the only, there's only a handful of major league teams that play that way. The Astros being one of them. Uh, and they've set a good example here locally for, how baseball should be played and how it's supposed to be pitched, how it's supposed to be played uh, collectively. And you see, obviously, over the last five or six years, that has borne out in our favor very predictably, you know, per uh, Skip and I saying, hey, what percentages, uh, what are things that we can do that are going to put the percentages in our favor over the course of 162 games? Right. Astros at pitchers execute. Astros hitters don't strike out uh, very frequently. Uh, they do a good job of, of navigating each at bat is, is a very, very uh, solid at bat and very hard as a pitcher to turn over multiple times. 
Mike can Mike can coach. Uh, he he's spoken with Coach Johnson several times. He's a quality uh, eyeball for LSU and any pitchers. He's really good. Mike, I'm going to turn you over to Tommy. We got to take a break. I'm going to turn you over to Tommy, but don't go away. Okay. No good. Go ahead, Coach. You got it. No, we're good. We're good. Mike, I want to th- thank you. Uh, we we're going to go to another segment. Thank you for coming on the show. Of course, always good to talk to you. You got lots of information. Good luck there in Houston. And uh, TK, take it away. Yeah, thank you again, Mike. This uh, segment again was brought to you by uh, Citizens Bank. We'll come back with the motivational moment brought to you by Marucci. That's up next here on Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Th- thanks, Stay Mike. Tuned. Hey, Skip, real quick, I got a funny story for you. Oh, oh, oh okay. wait a minute. Wait, wait a, minute. a minute. Hold no, on, Lloyd. Well, hold the a... phone. Hold the phone. I mean, we were here. All right, what do you got? Well, no, you, so you guys were talking about how it's a, it's a year-round deal uh, now for players and, 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 you know, access to weight rooms and training. Uh, coaches like myself who, who have been there, done that, uh, do everything. Uh, so, so those are kind of like the minimums these days, right? But, hey, back – when I was playing, when I come back to Houston, guess what? I didn't have anybody to throw with. <laughs> so what did I do to keep throwing? Uh, I would go up to my high school tennis court and throw against the uh, tennis return wall. Wow. Uh, when when I when coach got involved and started talking about uh, specifics and visualizing your pitches, what I would do is I had to t- put these little tape marks on the wall. And I would I would practice ex, uh, executing each of my pitches to the these little X's throughout uh, this wall. So very very precise uh, point uh, to kind of hone your fine focus. But no no physical arm to throw with. <laughs> Just had a concrete wall to kick the ball back to me. Thanks, uh, Mike. You're the greatest. You're a great player and you're a great guy. And when you come back to Baton Rouge, come up by and see me. Yeah, definitely, Coach. Good good talking with you guys. Uh, definitely miss LSU, and I'll, I'll be over there soon. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. All right, we'll come back with more of Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Stay tuned. Hey, everyone. This is Buddy, our new team member. Why are you smiling like that? Jerry Lane Chevrolet, what's your favorite color car? We have SUVs, we have trucks, we have cars. Oh, and we have fast cars. Okay, we need this car done by the end of the day. All done. What the? All ready? And if you sign right here, we can have your car ready for you. Spreading joy and Christmas cheer for all of Baton Rouge to hear. for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barber shop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. With over 60 years of combined experience, Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. 
If you live on the North Shore of Lake Pontchartrain and you have a son or daughter that plays baseball or softball, you need to know about Six Rings Baseball Camps. Held at beautiful Coquille Park Recreational Facility and run by Dan Canterbury, Six Rings will teach baseball skills, play instructional games, and have fun playing the great game of baseball. Go to our website at www.sixringsbaseball.com for more information on our upcoming Thanksgiving and Christmas baseball camps. Six Rings Baseball. Learn the game to love the game. As owner and operator of China Hammond, Chance Kitchen has spent 20 plus years in the restaurant business and has taken inspiration from a multitude of sources and put them into what he considers to be the ideal establishment. As a Hammond native, Chance still has a strong attachment to the community in which he was raised. China's goal is to use local ingredients and delicious recipes to create an exceptional dining experience while also providing a fresh and inclusive atmosphere that can be enjoyed by everyone. Salute for a reservation call 9 Nine eight five six two two three two two two, or go to the website at www.cnahammond.com. We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. A couple of more segments for you, and this one brought to you by Premier Health. Premier Health. It's time to go to the motivational moment brought to you by Marucci Sports. And Marucci has a company founded and operated by current and former big leaguers, is dedicated to quality and committed to pro providing athletes at every level with the tools that they want and need to be successful. We owe it to the game to challenge convention and leverage technology to power a new level of performance. We know what it takes because we've stood where you stand. Embrace the game, show your style, add your flair, put in the hours, stay dedicated, and most importantly, honor the game. That's Marucci Sports. Hey, uh, Lloyd, move that Marucci uh, out of there. Let me, I'm going to talk to some people. Remember, I'm going to do the story. And you've uh, heard us every week. There's a group of people before the game, right field, left field, I've told you, two or three minutes. As Brett McCabe indicated, Oksana Boyol is a name. <laughs> you know, that's amazing how they remember those names. Because stories are great motivators. I have a story that's a team-building story. But this one is a true story. This one is has some historical basis, which is also good to teach kids. I mean, it's good to teach them about the history of baseball or just the history at all. And it's a good idea to do that in some of the story. Here's a great story with a team involvement, and it has to do with... General George Custer. Okay, of course, the time was June 25th, 1876, boys. Custer and his troops have about 650 soldiers. They were sent to round up some Sioux Indians. He came up to an Indian village in which Custer thought there were about a thousand in individuals. Uh, Custer was told by his superior, General Terry, wait until his troops arrive before anything begins. Scouts for General Custer indicated that there were more than 2,000 Indians. But, but Custer still divided his troops into three groups. He went north, probably he thought to attack a weak point in the village. Custer and a 210 men were killed in less than one hour. Why didn't he wait? Why didn't he divide his troops? Why didn't he do what General Terry asked him to do? Because Custer had a hidden agenda. He wanted to win an easy battle and get recognition and announce in November primaries he was going to run for president of the United States. He wanted to make a name for himself. The team was second in Custer's agenda. Getting a name for himself was number one. No one can have that hidden agenda. The team is number one for all of us tonight. I know it will be, and every night, because you represent LSU, you represent your family and your maker. Tonight, let's have fun and play like champions. In addition to that story, actually being true, I want to tell you something for our fans. And... Uh, Lloyd, uh, we're, take that Marucci. Yeah, let me let me look at you directly. Ready? 
Uh, I'm going to tell you this. You may not believe me, but look it up. June 25th, 1876 is the actual date of Custer's last stand, as people do remember. On that day, June 25th, in 1876, the National Baseball League opened up and the Chicago uh, Red Sox at that time and Blue Stockings and other teams that were called like Cincinnati Red Stockings beat Boston 2-1 to one on that date. Can you imagine the day that Custer went to fight in the Montana Territory somewhere? They were playing baseball in the East. What a country. <laughs> That's really good stuff. The motivational moment brought to you by Marucci and this segment brought to you by Premier Health. We're going to take our final break. We're going to come back, put a wrap on things, tell you about a dynamite show coming up next week. Don't forget to click the like button and share. Tell everybody about Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. We'll be back. burger so big it's got its own gravitational pull to keep you coming back oh and tasting freaking awesome could have something to do with it too sammy's better than ever don't have time for a cold a cut those allergies or a sprain i really don't have time for this Blake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Blake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable Storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable Storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at dependablestorage.com. La Carreta is the place for after work fun, but that's just the beginning of why we've been in South Louisiana for over two decades. Follow your nose to the best Mexican grill and experience fresh ingredients, fun indoor and outdoor dining, and fast and friendly service. Like our Facebook page for event news and live music announcements. Visit CarretaRestaurant.com to find daily specials for your local La Carreta. Fresh, fun, and festive, it's where the fiesta begins. Do the words investing, 401k, mutual funds, IRA, and annuities have you worried or confused? The team at Altus Wealth of Mickey Gidry, Ronnie Brown, Jesse Daigle, Brad Ewing, Wally McMakin, Jeremy Perkey, John Reeder, John Stewart, Clay Moffitt, and Dixon McMakin are ready to help with all your financial and estate planning needs. Find them at www.altuswealthmgt.com or call 201-9300. That's 201-9300. Are you a baseball fan, LSU fan, sports fan, or success fan? Purchase your copy of Everything Matters in Baseball, the story of the building of the most successful college baseball program in history. This book details the path to the decade of excellence culminating in five national championships in 10 years at LSU. Starting from humble beginnings, Skip Burtman changed baseball to LSU, the SEC, and the entire college baseball world. Get your copy of this entertaining and inspiring story today by going to www.acadianhouse/sports.com. All right, we continue. Final segment here of the books. You just saw the ad for the book, uh, Everything Matters in Baseball. It's over here on the table as well. Uh, a couple of things uh, as we wrap a few things up. We want to thank Dr. Brett McCabe and Mike Soraka. 
couple of your former players. They both did a great job. They, they were excellent. Uh, they're both uh, professionals uh, in this business now. And uh, they're both, uh, you know, did their thing at LSU. And then, and like I say, they have excellent talent. And Mike took it to the 10th degree. He went all the way. But uh, I do want to say uh, thanks, uh, you know, for those guys being here. And next week. Boy, we got it loaded up for you next week. Coach Canterbury will be away from the microphone next Where's he Tuesday. going? I don't know, Coach. I mean, he might be out signing his own book. No, I don't know. no. I'll tell you what. I'm going to, to, to do business with one of our sponsors, like That's we right. say. That's uh, right. Going to Baton Rouge Ortho, getting uh, tomorrow morning, bright and shiny. Going to get a new knee. Uh, Tommy so, knows all about that. We, we want to wish you a lot of luck, as we did with Tommy when he had his knee replaced. But now, Tommy's going again. I'm going the, again for the left for knee. For the other knee. So you're want to wish you coach, a lot of luck. Like, I always wanted to be like you, and I'm trying to replace as many parts as you do. <laughs> That's right. Now we brought Tommy on the show. Yeah, he's Tommy's replacing trying to catch parts. up. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now, here's the thing. Yeah. Coach will be away next week. Right. We got a dynamite show. Lined right. up. How can we get by? And the answer is the only way you can get by is without having the big left hander with us is to have another big left hander, the biggest of them all, Ronnie Rance. Jumbo. Jumbo himself will be here to co host the show with Tommy, but also here is one of my favorite coaches of all time and a Hall of Famer, Dee Dee Bro. Oh, she's wonderful. And uh, she's going to be here. She may stay a while, uh, you know, and Ronnie, and we're not going to have Cano for just one week. And then, of course, Cano will be back. See, and I'm, well, I'm it, selfless. See, I wanted to make the show better with me going, that's from playing for Coach Burton. You know, make it better. <laughs> but, hey, whether, whether you're watching this Tuesday night or you're watching a little later in the week, as many people do, that's right. let everybody know, next week, Jumbo Ronnie Rants. And D.D. And bro. D.D. Bro. You Coach and more, I will be here. here you can't time. get more personality on a sh- on one show. No, I'll one tell you what. You can't do that's going to be epic. That's going to be one. To, don't miss that one, okay? <laughs> right. Now, I epic. got a comment from earlier tonight. The line of the night, maybe the line of the fall, was when Brett McCabe said the little girl from Ames, Iowa, got her <laughs> graduate degree at Ole Miss. And everybody that knows – that story knows how funny that really is. Oh, Coach, that was good. Tell the girl from Ames Island. <laughs> yeah, give quick. us that one real quick. So they know. All right, here, here's what that really is. Uh, I would get up at the, at the beginning of every year with the same talk. And they heard that once every year at the beginning of the year. I says, it's the beginning. I mean, it's like in the third day. School hadn't even begun yet. And everybody's back. And some kids used to come up to me and say, Coach, what do I do with this? Or how do I get to this? What do I do? How do I? How about the dorms? What about the apartment? And I say to them, listen, a girl will come here from Ames, Iowa, which, of course, is a real place. And she'll never have to ask anybody what to do. She'll follow directions, and she'll get it all done. You be like that girl from Maine. Don't ask me. Don't ask any coaches. Just get it done. Well, one day Tookie Johnson's sitting in his classroom. The girl, <laughs> everybody gets up and says, Hi, I'm Tookie. I'm from uh, Elmer, New Jersey. That's, uh, of course, where he's from. And all of a sudden, this girl goes, she gets, I'm from Ames, Iowa. <laughs> Tookie, whoa! I did Coach Berman really had a girl. Yeah, I, and the point I'm making, and it's still a valid point, get the work done yourself. The coaches don't have to do it for you. You learn how to do it, and you'll be better off for it in every way. Like Dr. McCabe said, figure it out. Figure right? it out. But the, that, Bianca, but the system carried on. Oh, the girl yeah, got a graduate that, yeah, that's true. To me, that's the line of the fall <laughs> so far. Any closing comments, Coach? Best of luck tomorrow. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, you guys have a great time. I'll be watching the show from my iPad in the hospital <laughs> bed or at my house, one of the two. Any closing thoughts? Coach? I just want to say good luck uh, to both of you on your surgery. I'm looking forward to seeing Ronnie and Dee Dee next week. That's going to be good. Thanks to Lloyd and everybody with FM Digital Media here. We appreciate all the comments. Hit the like button. Share this video. 
Tell everybody about it. On behalf of Dan Canterbury and Skip Bourbon, I'm Tommy Chrysan, and you have been watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you for watching the Hold the Rope show, presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and Sammy's Grill on Highland. Join us next Tuesday at 6 p.m.